a merry, merry Christmas to you all. So do you come here tonight with all the packages wrapped? With all the stockings ready and hung by the chimney, with everything done and set so you can just sit back and relax and hear the story that guides us on this night? Well, I'm afraid I still have lots of packages to wrap. Hopefully not late into the night. I still haven't even pulled out the stockings yet. But I'm ready. I'm ready to hear the story that we've just heard. I'm ready to let that message of God incarnate, God with us in Christ our Savior, I'm ready to hear and receive it. For many of us, Christmas is a very busy season. If you look around at the staff, no, it's a very busy season for the staff of the church. But a night like this, look around. Look at who's here. Look at who's joining us from so many places. Look at the love. God's presence with us. And so we're ready to settle down and hear that story again and sing some of our favorite carols that bring the birth of our Savior to mind. We do have wonderful carols to enjoy tonight. Already some we've heard, some yet to come, uh, that wondrous favorite silent night written in 1818, 205 years ago now. Always one of my favorite parts of our Christmas journey. But perhaps you're familiar with another favorite carol of the season, one we're not singing tonight because we have so many other favorites which we're sharing, but I thought I'd give it a little bit, bit of time in the spoken part of our service. This carol is a relative newborn, born only, written only in 1962, but it's already become so well-loved. Do you hear what I hear? A carol that I learned first when I was in junior high school, and we sang it in our junior high choir. I've loved it ever since, singing that alto harmony to it. The story of the carol, of course, goes like this. It begins with the night wind. The night wind sees what Christmas is all about through a star shining in the sky. So the night wind tells a little lamb, and the little lamb hears what Christmas is all about through a song in the air and goes to the shepherd boy. Because of these things, the little shepherd boy knows the meaning of Christmas, and he goes to the mighty king. And he says to the mighty king, do you know what I know? And the mighty king says to his kingdom in a deep voice, listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. The king announces a child, a child Sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. A message we need in our weary world today. Do you see what I see? When you look into the manger and see the Christ child, do you see? What do you, what do you see? Do you see just another little baby, maybe even a baby doll if you're looking in a pageant manger? Do you see the founder of one of the world's great religions in infant form? Or do you perceive that Jesus is the very presence of God on earth? Do you perceive tonight Jesus is here with us in the songs we sing, the scriptures we hear, in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup, 
in the lighting of the candles which celebrate that he is the light of the world. Do you see that Jesus is the one who touches all of our life's complexities and riddles and insoluble problems? Do you see who this child really is? That Jesus can turn your life upside down, be a revolution in your heart, pull the hope out of you so that you can finally love and live as you were created to. Do you see that when you look into the manger? Do you see what I see, said the night wind to the little lamb? Of course, there are different ways of seeing, aren't there? If you go back to the Greek, there are a couple of words. One of them means, I see you. I see the manger scene. I see the Christmas tree. I see the stars and the sky. I see the red carpet and the pews around us. I see. That's one word for see. But there's a second word in Greek that is the word that means to see deeply. It's not sight, but insight. So let's hear some examples of this. Michelangelo, the all-famous sculptor, when he was in Florence, Italy, saw an enormous piece of granite, one that really nobody knew what to do with. Everyone would walk by and notice it. They'd see it. But Michelangelo, he saw it. He saw the possibility of creation of his famous sculpture, David. He went to work with his tools. And by the time it was done, he created one of the most magnificent works of art ever known. Do you see? Do you really See, Michelangelo saw with insight, with depth of understanding. And that's the kind of sight that we're called upon to use tonight. Have you ever been with someone who truly loves nature and walked around with them in the woods? Someone who's really familiar with the natural world. It's amazing to go out into nature with them. They might see mushrooms that you had no idea were there. They might know where to peek for, for some kind of rare wildflower that you didn't even know existed. The types of trees or ferns or leaves fall into the ground and, and what the, the nature and habits of the plants are about. They not only see what a pretty place it is, they see with insight. Do you see what I see? Said the night wind to the little lamb. When you came to church tonight, what do you see? Who did you see? Did you see friends you've known for a long time? Perhaps people you've only known for a year or two, a month or two. People you haven't seen in ages, perhaps. Folks you yearned to see. Did you see them tonight? Or people you don't even know. New friends you could make. Who did you see? Or did you, do you see a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, a people set apart, as the Bible calls us. Did you see God's people gathering here to worship? God's people sent out into the world to bear light in the darkness. God's people, the hands and the heart of Christ, at, alive and at work in the world today acting to transform it, to turn the world upside down in all its warring madness and to turn it toward 
light and love, hope and healing, grace and peace. Who did you see when you came tonight? The night wind said, do you see what I see? When you come to this table, do you see just a hunk of bread that's passed to you? A cup to dip it into? People walking to and fro from the altar rails to kneel and pray? Or do you see God's grace poured out for us? God's heart broken because of the brokenness of the world, but God's love offered to us through that breaking so that in our brokenness we are met just as we are by a love that can heal and transform and free. Do you see when you come your sins forgiven, your life restored? Do you see the the sins of those around you forgiven, those whom you love dearly, those in this world who you find it hard to love? Do you see that you can finally, finally forgive yourself because God's love meets you just as you are? Do you see, said the night wind, to the little lamb. And when you go back out into the world, back to work, back to your relationships, to the workaday life in a couple of days, what will you see then? All those obnoxious people driving cars when you need to be on the road? People sitting at their desks, doing their own thing, people who just live their lives beside you? Or will you see lives with whom you can connect? People God loves just as God loves you. When you go out into the world, will you see nations at war, people struggling to feed their families, mistrust and fear abiding because our eyes are to be opened by this one who is in our midst as Savior. Our hearts are be, to be broken open just as God's heart is broken open for us. Do you see what I see, said the night wind to the lamb. Christmas is a feast for the eyes. When you came here tonight, did you see the beautiful twinkling twinkling lights all around you on the streets? Did they remind you of the joy of the season? Did they remind you also of the light that comes to the world. The light shining in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. A light we can count on, a light which changes everything. Did you see that Christ is your guiding light? That when the world is at its darkest, God's light still shines with persistence and perseverance and the darkness is never dark enough to do its work on us. Do you see the glorious light toward which God calls us, Christ leads us? The light of God's fully realized Rain, toward which we work and in our hearts for which we yearn. Do you see that under all the presence, behind all the wrapping, 
is love. The love of God here for you this night. A star, a star shining in the night. He will bring us goodness and light. A child, a child shivers in the cold. Let us bring him our silver and gold. Do you see the love of God? Listen to what I say, said the king. Pray for peace, people everywhere. As we come this night, may our lives be touched because our eyes are open. May our hearts be warned because Christ is here with us. And may the world know change and hope and possibility because we commit ourselves to bear this light that we lift tonight so that all the darkened corners may shine brightly with God's love. Let's commit ourselves to that and wrap it up with a bow and offer God's love to this weary world. Do you see? Do you know? Do you love in Jesus' name? Amen.